Alright, this is JD. Welcome to my channel. Watch my service. Provide servicing of vintage pocket watches. Well, what do we have here today? So, my friend Phil, I'm not going to use last names, but Phil had sent me two watches and Phil will know what these are in red bags. So I just finished working on a Hamilton. I just completed this watch here. Right, and it's done and dusted and actually running in really good time too so this will be shipped back as you can see i let it run overnight make sure there's no other issues and then phil sent me two watches this is an old american waltham watch um, it was overbanked, so the impulse jewel was in the other side of the uh, of the mouth for the pallet fork so i just unscrewed that lifted it up and got it running again so that was a uh, pretty quick but i'm going to disassemble that for full cleaning because probably has never been cleaned so this is that's one of the watches and the second watch and you can see it's just ticking away there it's a nice old watch I love these old watches with their big giant faces so this is a uh, that is an acrylic crystal not a glass crystal but this crystal here on this watch let me take a look at this here is a big massive glass crystal so that's a pretty vintage looking glass crystal there. It's even got a chip on the side. So I don't know if there's anything that, that Phil wants me to do with that crystal, but I'll tell you what is really wrong with this watch is that it has a broken balance staff. So see that wobbly uh, balance here? That's because the staff is broken. So what we're going to do here is we're going to remove that balance staff quickly um, and we're going to punch it out uh, and we're going to order a new balance staff or try to order a new balance staff. So this could be a job and a half. If I manage to get a new balance staff somewhere, it's not going to be as difficult. But I'm going to keep this complete watch kind of intact until I get this balance staff issue resolved. Uh, let me just take this screw out here. Let me see if I can remove that. There it is there. There's another thing here is that right if you look right here there's kind of half a screw so that's not that's going to be a bit of a problem i think now just to save me some time some time and labor i'm going to actually take the um the hairspring off here so this is a little bit tricky but leave this in place and then take the hairspring off so what I'm going to do here, I normally would take the whole balance and balance staff off, but I think I can release the hairspring from this watch first. So I'm going to put back the uh, screw for the balance cock. That way I know that the, the balance is nicely in place. And then I'm going to look and see like what kind of a screw do I have here for the uh, stud on this hairspring. So, um, okay, I can see what it is now. Yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. So I'm going to just grab a screwdriver here and I'm loosening the stud here. Like this. I should be able to poke that stud straight down. To keep my screwdriver away from the parts. There we go. I actually have a needle. I've taken a... Um, I've taken a needle and I've installed it in one of these things here, right? So that way I can poke things out. It's very precise, like that. So now when I remove the balance cock from this watch, this old American Waltham watch, the, uh, there we go. There's a screw, and I just want to make sure I got a tray for all this stuff because it's tray important. <laughs> French. So there, so that's out there, and this thing just should pop right up. You just usually have to take a screwdriver, a really thin one, go on the edge here, and just wedge just a tiny bit. Try not to scratch the plates, and then you can lift this straight up, like so, like that, and then. This should have released the whole mechanism, but it didn't. Just hang on a second. I can poke this a little bit further. There we go. So that's the balance cock. We'll deal with this later. I just need to figure out. I need to remove this, and then I need to take the um, 
the hairspring off the balance too, right? So there's the balance like that. And I'm going to just tap inside the hole there and then see if the if the balance, if this ticks back and forth. And yes, it does. So all you do here is you tap inside here. Let's see if I can do this without like that. And you see how that snapped over? That snapped over because there's power on the mainspring. So um, I'll need, that's a good thing. Uh, power on the mainspring is absolutely a good thing. So I'm going to be um, taking the hairspring off of this balance now. So I'm just going to put the watch movement out of the way because um, I can deal with that later. Um, I probably, I don't want to clean the watch movement until I get the part. That way I don't confuse issues. So, but now I've got to remove the hairspring from this uh, balance here. So it's a pretty simple procedure. Just find a, uh, there we go, like that. You go in like this, and then let me turn the light on in this camera here, so maybe that'll help a bit with the illumination. There you go. And I usually use my smallest screwdrivers to do this. So which my white and my white and my yellow, and then I'll get in close. I gotta move stuff out of the way because stuff is always in the way. And there's all kinds of ways of doing it, but I find the best way of doing it is to just wedge the screwdrivers in here very carefully and underneath everything like so on one side and, and on the other side and then you twist like that and then the hairspring comes out that's the safest way I've found to do this over the years and there's my hairspring. Looks like it's in pretty good condition. We'll just be tossing this hairspring into some some um, lighter fluid to clean that up after. I'm going to put that in with the rest of the stuff. I'll show you that to you later. So here's the balance. So there's the staff. And if I look at the balance staff, it looks like pivots are broken on both sides. So you see that balance staff? You can see the pivots on both sides. Pivots on this side, gone pivots on the other side gone so I'll want to remove the roller table from this it's only got a single roller which is nice and then once I get the roller table removed I can punch up the balance staff so let's get on with that job so this is the device that's the fastest for removing roller tables so I just put this in here and it slides in and it goes in super tight like that and that supports the roller table and then I just punch it down. So I'm going to see if I have another roller table device here though. Well, don't I have a lot of tools. <laughs> so here I've got a um, the roller table remover. There's one there where you just squeeze the roller table in. You, you go like that and you squeeze and that squeezes the roller table out of position. I don't like that. Right? Then my magic roller remover was my best one. So I love this one. And I've got some other roller removal devices here as well. So this one here, um, I just love this one because you put the roller table in there like that and then you, you secure it nicely and then you punch it out. This is another roller table remover device like that. And here you're squeezing, let me just get a close up of here, this one here, you're squeezing the roller table in like this into position and then you're turning this wheel to push the roller table out like that. So this is a fairly safe device. I've never used this one before, um, but it was made in France. And so if things are made in France, got to be good, right? So I do like punching it though, because punching it seems to be more of a nothing is gonna break situation. I did break one of my magic roller remover device thingamajobbies, which really pisses me off. See that is now in two pieces. And this is one of my favorite ones. And I think this one is the one that works really well for big pocket watches. So I broke that one. This one here may or may not be too small for this particular roller table. Because all you do here again is, you, is you're taking this roller table and you're putting it inside of here. And then you're, re then you're removing it. So but if I look at the gap, can that, can that be done? Let me see, Let me see if that can be done. So if I just loosen this up here, 
like that. And then I put this in the arm like this. Not sure if this is too big or too small or what, just the size of Montreal. Then I go like that. And then I have to tighten this up. So what I do is just grab this and then turn it until it tightens onto the, uh, did I tighten it or am I loosening it? I don't know what I'm doing here. Yeah, it's the other way. It's the other tight, as they say. The other tight. So let me try this again here. Got it in like that. Like this. And then I tighten it. Like this. And let me look at all the angles here. So right now I've got the roller table is in there. It's tightening up. I'll show you what that looks like here. So it's stuck in there like that and it's tight and then I'm going to look at that with my, my uh, flip over loop here. So that's pretty good there. Now theoretically I just have to tap on the top. I have to do some top tapping. So I bring one of my uh, top topping devices up here and I want to make sure that fits exactly over the top like that so that needs to be moved just a bit so it's always a it's a world of adjustments right so if i move this a little tiny bit like that can i get the table lined up properly there now it's lined up so I should just be able to tap down on that and it should remove the roller table. Right? Right. You know what? It moved again. Darn it, stop moving. Maybe I don't need it to be so tight, right? I want it to be right over the top of this though like that. So now if I tap on that the way it is, the ro is the roller table coming off? And what you want to make sure is that you don't break the roller table. So this is supposed to be a safer way of doing it, right? So if I do this and tap it, there we go. So the roller table is out, out, as they say, and there is the roller table right there. I'm going to grab that. Like this. There's the roller table right there. And I'm going to put that in with the rest of the watch parts. And now I'm going to remove that. So that did work and that's a size 18. So I still can use this device. The Magic Roller Table Remover. That sounds like Get Smarty. The Magic Roller Table Remover. I love this little Magic Roller Table Remover. This one here I'll have to try sometime, but it just pushes it out, which is kind of cool, right? Another tool. Wait a second, do I have more tools? No, we'll go buy some. <laughs> now this one here is also a Roller Table Remover. So this would be, all you do here is you squeeze you turn this thing here and it squeezes around that roller table and then you use this device and you just push down. What I don't like about these push down ones is that you don't get that little snappy bit of friction, right? So I've used this one here for years. You just go bam smash. It's I don't think I've ever broken a roller table on this one with this one. That's what you want to do is you want to avoid breaking a roller table. Because if you break the roller table, you got to get a new one. And then if you got to get a new one, it's more hunting. So you're either hunting for parts or roller tables. So now what we're going to do now is remove the balance staff from the balance. Okay. So let me uh, get myself all set up here. All right. Another tool. So let me put this one back for a second. We land of many tools. And I have my staking set up. Out. Hoot. Staking set out. And here I've got special tools for removing the balance staff from a balance without causing any harm 
to the uh, the arms of the balance themselves. So this is the tricky part. So we've got it's either this one or the other one. It's one of the two. <laughs> and so there's a bigger one and a smaller one. So let's assume that it is the bigger one this time. All right. And as you can see, there's a hole in the bottom of this thing, right? So hole in the bottom of the sea. I'm going to move my camera down a bit so you can see most of the action. Action. And there's two punches here. Punch number one and two. Likely use the second punch because I think that one will punch it out nicely. And I'm looking at the balance here and which way this balance goes. So as you can see by the balance, you're gonna I'm gonna end up punching it out this way. I don't believe it's a riveted balance, but I'm gonna check and see if it is. Because if it's riveted, uh, this tool will still work if it's riveted, so it's not a problem there. But I'm punching it out uh, this way, right? That if you look at the balance here, it's going it's going to go from right to left on the camera. So what what I want to do then is I want to snug that into one of the holes in here, and I want to have this device over the top of it. So let's see if I can figure out how to do this. I got to lower myself in my seat. Lower the globe. So I want to find the right hole for this. Loosen the uh, staking set. You want it to be nice and snug. I don't think I need a stump for this because I want the balance to be flat like that. So I want the balance to actually be flat against the staking set so you don't want it rised up because if it's up then it could cause problems. It's funny, this balance it looks like it's bent a bit or something. So, let me see. All right. So let me go back down here and then just try to fit the balance into the right hole. It's not that one. I think it is this one. So this one will do. So, so now I just have to line up uh, the hole properly, which is centering on your staking set. So I just make sure I got the right hole. That's the right hole. Remove the balance. Go down on that hole like that and you just press down and make sure it's in there nicely like that and then tighten it. Tighten your staking set and put your centering device away like that. So now I want to take this balance and let me look at my, so it's right there, so it's right here and I just want to see what, when I look inside here, what's this looking like? Is that too big? Yeah, it might be a bit too big. I think I might use a smaller one. Let me have a look in the end here. Yeah. A smaller one might fit. And what you want to do then is make sure that that's lined up properly. And it is. All right. And what you want to do is get close and dirty on this. So what I'm going to do is show you. I'm going to get a little closer here and moving the camera real time which is what you should never do right professional videographers that's two words videographer would never do that so i'm going to try try to do this with the bigger one here but i'm not sure if that'll fit uh, let me think here i might not need the bigger one let me look at the two of them here the smaller one might do here so what i want to do then is snug that in so you snug that in place. Now there's holes in the side, and those are the holes you kind of look through while you're doing this. So I just make sure that that's in like that. And then if I reel this up, will it snug tightly against the top of the staking set? That's the question. That is the question is, seems to be a bit of a stretch, but it's out there, so. And then I want to look through that hole to make sure, as you can see, that that the stake as I see you look very carefully see how that stake is now pressing on that balance on the pivot so that should allow me to knock out that uh, I'm gonna look at it again a little closer here that should allow me to knock that out so I'm gonna push again I'm gonna push against the top of the uh, staking set in again a little harder to make sure it's nice and snug in there and look at it from all angles I think that's okay. Let me see. 
I'll loosen it up again. Loosen it up just a bit. So one of these methods is loosening. So and I just want to make sure that that is snug in there. So I'm going to push down on it a bit as I do that. Then I'm going to look in the hole again. I'm going to hit that against the camera. So there you go. That's it there. I'm not going to pull that up this time because I should be able to knock that out now. So you get your hammer and the the balance should go down through here. So if I just like that, that should be knocked out. And it's just, let's just see if I'm right or wrong here. Yeah. So there it is. There's the balance. The balance is kind of sitting in the hole here. <laughs> So there's always something, right? So I don't want to have to disassemble this whole watch thingamajabby doohickey to get that out, but who knows? It's kind of stuck in there. It's not what I was expecting. Yeah, it's stuck in that hole. So I'll get that out of the hole somehow. Oh, I think I could grab it from the top. I might be able to grab that from the top with a pair of... Uh, I think I'll use a pair of tweezers but the types that that will grab because I don't want to clip it right so I want to grab it with a pair of tweezers so let's see so that, so I should have picked a bigger hole to allow that to drop through that's a lesson instead of that hole and I think that I don't think I can punch it up through the bottom I'm not sure because I'd have to have a wire and then take the wire and go up through the bottom so I'll try with a pair of tweezers first but let me see if I can find my tweezers. Do I have my tweezers? I got tools all over the place here. Let me see. I know I got a ton of tweezers. I just have to find them. I'll be back in a second. Luckily, I've got every tweezers known to mankind. So these are nippers. So I'm hoping I can just grab that balance staff. Eh, that might not fit like that. I may have to grab it this way and pull up. Not sure. That might not work either, because I can't get under here. That's the problem, right? I may have to poke this from the bottom, find some, a wire or something to go through the bottom, and then just push it up. So I do have various types of wires here that I could probably use to push that up. Um, let's see if I can try that. I'll be back in a second. I'll let you know how I did. All right, I found a piece of metal that I use for making balance staffs with, and there it is poking through that hole. So now I gotta move it over one hole and see if I can find the other hole and then poke that. So I'm not sure if that's, po oh, look at that, there we go. I'm a genius, I'm a genius, I tell you. So there, that was the one way of doing it. I just took a piece of metal, I bent it, and then poked it up through the thing. So, so the lesson here is that uh, make sure you're the hold for punching out the balance staff isn't too uh, too big. So there's the balance staff and the balance. So that's all ready. Now I have to look up the movement number. Um, and this movement, if I look at this movement here, this is a seven nine seven nine seven five nine two two. So where would I find a seven nine seven five nine two two movement? This is an American Waltham watch company watch so i've got some catalogs i'm going to look at just hang on and maybe i'll find it online so here i've signed up to the uh, pocket watch database you see some of my tabs here on poising balances and stuff from the previous lookup right let me get rid of the, those because i don't need them anymore it's my youtube channel what's that doing up there so here we go so i'm going to put the movement serial number in here which is 797-5922. 797-5922. Helps with your memory actually doing this watch work. And this is an American Waltham watch company. So this should just say Waltham on this in this database. And there it is. And then you hit search. And this will find the exact movement. There's the movement right there. So let's look at the movement for a second. That's a grade 18 Waltham movement serial number model and the it was produced in 1896 of a 10,000 uh, run quantity 
right? Remember, they only had pocket watches back in those days, okay? So this is why uh, millions of pocket watches produced, because people still needed to know what time it was. It's not a low high jewel movement. It's an 18S size, and it's a 7 jewel movement, open face, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Um, you could also look at the value of this movement, and it's probably not valued super high, but... but um, I can look at it. Some people, it's value. Value is from a collector perspective, right? But if I look at the value of the movement, just clicking value here for a second to see if it wants to talk to me. And there it is. So it's a low value movement, right? Working condition, 77 bucks. So retail between 135 and 180. So not a high value. But if it's of if value is means it's it's someone's grandfather's pocket watch or these sorts of things, right? So. And when I do watch repairs, sometimes these watches aren't of high sell value, but they want to keep them because they want to give them to their kid or something like that. So, so that's that. So let me see if I can see if there's any parts I can find here. Let me see. So you go down to parts right here and see if I can locate the balance staff for this thing. What do you think the chances are? So if I look at this, look at this uh, particular watch let me see if I can zoom in a bit there we go I've zoomed in now so there's all of the uh, some of the parts so I don't see a balance staff over here do I let me see no not yet not yet oh there's a balance staff right there I think so I think one 764 is a balance staff uh, nope, that's a fourth wheel hub. Still don't have a balance staff. Well, there's the balance. So is 763 the staff? One of these buggers is the staff. 771 is the balance. Uh, the roller is 709. So there's a roller in here. Um, or 769 is the roller. I'm just babbling away here, folks. This 767 looks like the balance staff. Oh, there it is. So that's a 767 is the balance staff. There it is there. That's part number 767. And here we have the various dimensions of the balance staff. So we have the, let me just zoom in on this a little bit more. Uh, I think I zoomed out. Zoom in a little more. So it's too big now. I think I, I got way too big. I got to zoom out of it here so I can see what I'm doing. Um, and then can I move this over? No, I can't. I need to figure this out. Hold on a second as I annoy you on the screen because I want to be able to back this up. Here we go. Now, what did I say? I said 767. 767. 767 is the balance staff so it says three four three four four five seven three four three four five seven yeah these are the various models of that balance staff and those are the prices per dozen so that's not going to help me one friggin bit so what i want to do is measure that balance staff because if i don't measure the balance staff when I buy the bounce staff, it's staff 767 for this model, it's going to be the wrong one. So let's do some bounce staff measuring. So now I've got my famous book called American Watch Movements, and this book gives me parts. So if I look at this, what I have here is a it's a model 1883 as it says right here that's what I saw before model 1883 hunting an open face and the balance staff it's got three different four different versions of the balance staff if you look at the balance staff is right Let's see if I can find it again regulator balance staff there it is there so there it is so balance staff same part number, but it says balance staff, small waist, U-grade, small waist, adjusted grade, small waist, position grade. 
So this does not tell me specifically what balance staff I need to get for this particular watch. So now this is why I need to measure that balance staff. So like a good watchmaker, I need to put all my tools away so they don't get damaged. And these particular, this particular tool that's almost essential to safely remove a balance staff from a watch, put that away. Um, these pincers were of no use. I thought they might be, and neither were the pinchers. They were of no use for this particular job, um, but the hammer was useful. And the needle was a previous job. <laughs> but let me see. Let me think what else do I have to put away. And I got to put away my stake from my staking set. Don't drop that on anything. And I got to actually take my balance that I have sitting here and get it the heck out of the way so it doesn't put that on a tray over here. And then my balance staff is right dead center on the mat. So I can start measuring that in a few seconds. Now I've got to put the rest of this watch away in the tray so it's safe and out of the way like that. That's good like this. Keep it down like this and put that there in one of my many, 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 many watch trays. Right? And oh, by the way, the other watch has taken a licking, but it's still ticking. So that's actually pretty impressive. So that's, that's the one that just needs the cleaning. I can get rid of this block. So cleaning up your tools, absolutely essential. Otherwise, what you're gonna do is put that down onto that balance staff and you'll never find it again. And anyone who's out there who's a watchmaker would agree that that your arm is a magnet when it comes to watch when it parts. It'll just stick to your arm and you'll never see it again. So, so I got this little balance staff that I'll likely embed in a piece of Rodico just so I won't lose it. So now I've got the battle staff in a piece of Rodico, safe out of the way from small children and obstacles that might cause problems. So it's, um, and yeah, don't do this on TV unless you're trained, <laughs> something like that. So, so here's my micrometer. This thing is pretty friggin' accurate, right? It's pretty friggin' accurate. And I keep the battery out of it so the battery doesn't die. So this is one of those made in China micrometers, but the, uh, they have done an amazing job with this micrometer. I've used it for years and there's no issues at all. So I just put that battery into place, pop that in there. And once that battery's in, it kind of stays in. I don't even need to take the knobby off it. And it's a bit upside down right now, but I just do this and then hit zero. Now I got zero and it's millimeters to three decimal places. As you can see, now I need to stand to hold this thing. This little device I picked up at a place called Cardin Tools and it's uh, near a town of the town of Perth, Ontario, right? If you're not from the Canada, if you're from America, America? Murray Mac don't like kids. So if you're from America, then this means nothing to you. So, but this is a nice little town and this thing is a great little grabber because it can swing it sideways too. So if I want to take this thing and move it down like this, I could just do that. And now I've got a bit of an angle to look at the uh, screen with, right? So let me just move things around. I'm going to try to move things around so you can see them as I do the measurement, right? This is going to be very tricky. Prepare for some amazing camera work. So the first thing I want to do is draw a picture of my balance staff. So I want to do this end here, like that. And then there's a pivot on the end here, like this. And then this is, there's a block that goes like this. And then the balance staff rides up like that at an angle, like this and like this. And then it goes down like this. And then there's a the part where the balance sits that's like this. If I draw all these separate parts. And then there's the part where the that's the balance, the hairspring sits. So this goes in again like this. And then the hairspring sits on this like that. And then the balance goes down like this a bit. And then there's a pivot, right? Let me 
Let me look up this really close for a second. Sorry to be. Yeah, then the pivot goes down. So you got, uh, I got that, that, and that. So I got this part here. I got this part here where the hairspring sits. And then the pivot. So basically the pivot's like this. Like that. So the measurements I want are the width of this here. Right? Uh, I don't really need the width of this, but I do need the width of this. So I'm going to draw another arrow here. The width of that. I need the width of this. Like that. And I'm going to try to get the length of this. Right? So I'm going to try to get the length of this here. Right? I'm going to draw an arrow on this side here for the length of this. And then I want to get the length of this here. And I'm going to draw another arrow like this to get that length. And I want the length from here to here. Right? So maybe, maybe just do the length from here to the end here, right? Like that. And that's the full length of that. So I want that length as well. So that, so now when I order that bound staff, he understands what all these dimensions are, right? This is a, an important dimension. I could get the length of, or the, the width of that. So these are widths. These are all widths, right? Wits, W I D T H S. Those are all wits this way. And so, yeah, so time to do some measurements. So I'm going to go from this way over. So, so this is a little tricky, but you got to carry, you got to basically hold it in your tweezers while you're doing this. All right, this is as good as I can do it. So make sure this is zeroed, which it is. And then I'm going to take the, um, this part here and the first thing I'm going to measure is this end piece so this is tricky with the camera let me tell you this is not easy so I'm going to go down like this and then squeeze that into the into the micrometer and see what reading I get so that's 0.595 so I'll write that down on my card here. That's the first reading. So that's 0 0.595. 0 0.595. So probably 0 0.59 is good enough for that, right? And I, my erotico kind of fell off here. So I'm going to jab it again so I can get my second reading. So I just jab this with my erotico. I know this is such so exciting, I'm telling you. So now I'll close this down again. It's still zeroed, which is nice. I'll take the second reading at the base or the far end of the uh, of this. I need to twist this up a bit, I guess, just to give you a better view. There we go. Like that. I'll just move the stand over, I guess. Like this. Okay, this is tricky stuff, man. So now I want to jam this in here. And then see what this reading is. It tends to want to make it roll, so there we go. So it's 1.7, and then it's measured twice, cut once, right? So you put it back in there, and it's 1.695, so it's probably 1.7, I'd say. So 1.7 is the thickness, 1.7, and that's right there. And then the next measurement is the is the collar that for the um, balance. So I have to turn the balance staff around in my rotico, and then stuck stick it back into the rotico because it's probably the best place to hold it. Now I've got this out again, so you want to close your micrometer, right, and then zero it. See how that's changed just a bit. I'm going to zero your micrometer. Open it up again, 
and now I've got to get deep, really close here. So I'm going to bang the camera here with my lens. So. There we go. So that is point one or one two four five. One point two four five. And just to make sure I got the right measurement, I want to turn this a bit and look at it. And that's pretty good there. One point two four five. So that's one point two four five right there. So back this up, put it back in, snug it again. One point two five, so one point two four five, so one point two five is probably good. One point two four five, one point two five, one point two five, and that's that piece there. And then this next piece is where the where the um, hairspring, call it, connects. So I'm going to go close it down again. It's zeroed. Open it up. And now I want to squeeze it right here. And that is 0.928. So I can go 0.928. That should do 0 0.928. 0.928, take it out. Zero it. That's good. Measure it again. 0.928. Now it says point not point nine two seven. <laughs> so point nine two seven point nine two eight. That's good enough. Point nine two seven point nine two eight. Point nine two eight. I'll go bigger than smaller, right? So that's that part. And now I need the length of that balance staff, right? So I'm putting it back into the Rodico. This is a length with broken pivots. So I'd like to, I'd like to get all the length here, but I'm not sure whether I'll be able to get all those lengths on camera. So what I want to measure here is these lengths here and these lengths here. But for now, I'll measure the complete balance staff. Um, I don't think I can. I don't think I can get in there to measure these lengths under camera. So. I can do it because I've got to eyeball the length because I've got to line it up and then move the balance stuff back and say, okay, that's about it right there. 1.6. And if I move this, I'm just going to move this sideways for a second because this is the way I would normally do it, right? And it's the same way I cut a balance staff, right? Is I put it up against where I need to do the cuts and then I eyeball it down so I know I got the right length. So that length there is I think with the pivot, if I say with the pivot, it's going to be probably around there, which would be 2.185 with the pivot. That's 2.185 with the pivot. And so that's 2.185 with the pivot. So that's from the pivot over, right? And the base, I just eyeball the base here. I'll probably hit the camera again. I apologize. But the length of the base is a little easier because I can squeeze that in there. The base is around 1.4, 0 1 1.400 is the base, and then the length to the other end of the pivot is 
I'll just do it this way. That's from the base to the, to the other end. And including the pivot, I leave a little material for the pivot. And I'm about there, which is about 2.25. That's to the pivot. That's 2.25. All right. So let me show you what I got here. So there are the results. So you can see up top here, these are the widths I have. So it's a 0.595. So he'll measure that, this, where I get my source, my uh, balance staffs from. And then 1.7 is ac actually right here, not here in the middle. And then 1.25 for the balance itself. And then 0.928 for this. And then the distances are 2.25, including the pivot. 1.4 is here, and the distance here where, where you would be fitting the uh, roller table is 2.185. So that's it. So now I've got, there's the balance, my friends. So I'll take a picture of that balance, and I will redraw this baby, and I'll take a picture of that, and I'll send the email to, to, to the gentleman to source the balance for this, and let's see what how well we do so that's it so we stop for a second so that's it for this video i'm not going to bother pointing out myself again but uh, i'm jd please like and please share this video this is how you source a balance staff and um, i have done this many times it is a grade 18 waltham american waltham watch um, but as you saw in my other book, it, there's a number of balance staffs that could fit it. Um, so you want to do, you want to make sure you you measure the balance staffs so you're not leaving the uh, vendor out in the dark, so they can actually measure it and make sure it's the right size. So it's got to fit the hole in the balance that it goes through, and it's got to fit the roller table. Those are those are critical. So if this, if I get a balance that doesn't fit or is totally screwed up, I will attempt to make one on my lathes so because i can make one on my lathes i've done many balance staffs i might do it anyway just for practice so so thanks a lot thanks for watching my video thanks for supporting my channel and i'll see you later